What is up everyone? It doesn't matter if you are an old Swolger Nation OG part of this channel or if you're a new fitness culture fit cult member. Today we're going over how to train that chest here at home. Now I'm gonna be the first person to tell you the chest, the body basically that I've built has been mostly done in the gym but that's not to say that you cannot get a good chest workout at home. So today I'm gonna show you how to structure a routine that'll give you the most bang for your buck with what you have at your disposal. So it doesn't matter whether your goal is to get stronger or to add muscle, AKA hypertrophy. The way we do that is by progressive overload. Now that is very easily done in the gym. Here at home without weights, there's two ways we're gonna accomplish that. First, it's by creating angles so that we target the muscle in specific ways that we're able to overload that muscle. The second way is time under tension of any targeted muscles. That way we're really tearing down muscle fibers leading to that hypertrophy. With the movements we're doing today, you guys need to know that we can't really prescribe you a set number of reps because we don't know what you're capable of here. But in the Fitness Culture app, the key thing is that we're gonna be progressing from week to week. So that's when you enter in all of the reps you do if you're in the gym or even at home and then you build upon that. So with today, we're really gonna be shooting for right around that 10 to 12, but if you can do more, it's time then to make that exercise harder by either increasing that time under tension or adding maybe a backpack or elevating your feet. So with what we're doing today, again, we're really focusing on being able to progress in the future weeks to come. So you need to go to failure or close to failure depending upon what we're doing today. So today's workout, what we've done is we've programmed this routine designed to have the most difficult movement at the start. Now, what we're doing by, by making sure we do the most difficult movement first, is we're almost pre-exhausting. So we're gonna start off with a plyo push-up. This is gonna really overload that chest. And then from there, we're gonna subsequently follow with easier movement. So it's almost like extending the set, but we're making sure that we're hitting the chest with a variety of movements, with a variety of angles. So we're training the upper chest, the lower chest, the inner chest, and you're gonna see that even though it's supposed to get easier, you'll still stick basically within that rep range to failure because we're only giving you a certain period of rest time that really is gonna keep you working throughout the entire giant set. So first up, we have the plyometric push-up. Now this is gonna be super demanding on our central nervous system and is exactly why it's first in this routine. So we're gonna start out on top of the chairs or plyometric boxes if you're in the gym. And pretty much what we're gonna be doing is dropping down to our chest. Now, because we're dropping down, we're gonna elicit a lot of motor units in that, high threshold motor units to catch ourselves, not allowing our face to smack the ground and then to explode back up onto the boxes. So first movement, We've set up our chair shoulder width apart. We're gonna set up, feet on the ground in a nice upright push-up position. From here, we're just gonna drop. Boom, catching ourselves and exploding back up onto the chair. Resetting each time at the top. Full range of motion as well. Ah, starting to fatigue. Ah, one more. Ah, you can see why we can't go to absolute failure on this. We'd be missing the chair falling on our face. Now, if you can't do the plyometric push-up on the chairs, clapping push-ups all the way down. With this, we're not generating as much force on the way down. Obviously dropping from an elevated position, we're generating a lot more force, but this is a great one. If you can't do clapping push-ups, perform them on your knees. Whatever it is that you can do, stick with that. Make sure you're getting at least 10 reps. All right guys, as soon as you're done with the plyo push-ups, get those chairs out of the way. Give yourself about 20 seconds rest maximum. Find a wall that you can put your feet against and we're gonna be performing a pike push-up. Now a pike push-up, because of our arm angle, think of the way when you're doing an incline bench press, you have your arm angle up above more towards your head. 
That's exactly what we're recreating by doing this pike push-up. So we're gonna be up in this pike position. Booty's up in the air. This is probably one of the only times I'm gonna ever say, hey, put your booty in the air. You can also do these by putting your feet on the wall. It's getting this angle right here with our hands. From there, we're gonna press down. I actually like doing the pike variation a little bit more. You can crank out a little bit more reps. So, boom, booty's in the air, lean forward, push back. I'm not pushing up from here. You can see my head is behind my hands as I push forward, they're between my hands, my head's between my hands, and then I'm back to that starting position. This is gonna be a great developer for that upper chest. Squeeze all along. I don't want my elbows flaring out here. Going to failure here on this one. Hey. Leave that upper chest feeling like you just got done doing an incline dumbbell press. 20 seconds, and we'll be jumping into our next exercise. Next up, you're gonna wanna grab either paper plates, sliders, or even paper towels. And if you have hardwood floor, the paper towels work fine. If you have carpet, something like paper plates is gonna work great. This is basically our fly type movement. So in the gym, when we're doing a chest workout, we'll hit something like a bench press, an incline dumbbell press, cable flies or maybe a pec deck. What that's gonna do is really focus in on that outer pec when our arms are out here, and then boom. One of the essential things that our chest does, it contracts by bringing our elbow in. So you can see, bring it across our body, bring our elbow. You can bring your hand across your body and it's a lot of anterior delt. But the minute you go from here to here, it's a lot more pec involvement. So the way we train that at home is by setting up on our knees. Now this movement is not a beginner movement. Setting up on your knees, you can either put your butt up or put your butt forward. This obviously is gonna be a lot harder, so I'll show you guys this one at the beginning. We're gonna start out here, keeping our arms almost all the way straight. We don't wanna be completely locked out, but almost all the way straight. We're gonna be bringing it to the top and squeezing. You can see the amount of chest activation that goes on by doing that. Now, if you wanna push the hips through, it's gonna make it a little bit harder. Nice and slow. Again, one of the things we talk about uh, is time under tension. Three seconds, followed by three seconds on the way back in. Squeeze here. A lot of chest activation. Outer pec right there coming in. Now we're working that inner pec. Also, mind muscle connection. If I start doing this, a lot of anterior delts taking over. So when I say mind muscle connection, it's getting in this position, slight bend in the arms all the way out, coming back up using just the chest. And that's it. Again, when people talk about mind muscle connection, it's great to have, but there's a purpose to it. That mind muscle connection allows us to stay using that pec. We feel it all of a sudden when our triceps take over or if our anterior delt, like in this exercise, takes over. You need to make sure you keep that posture and that squeeze. Doing that will make sure mind muscle connection, you're using your chest and that's what we're working here. 20 seconds rest, you're back in it. We're gonna be doing our chair dips here. So it's gonna be a little bit different if you've never done this at home. It's gonna be targeting our lower chest. We've worked that upper chest, we're now working that lower chest. So just like we talked about that pike push-up and chest activations, the way these muscle fibers run, with a decline, we need to have our arms, if you think about a decline bench or a dip, everything is gonna be here for that lower chest. So the way we're gonna make sure we have the most activation is by trying to resemble that at home. We're gonna set up on our chairs a little bit more narrow than we had them for the plyo push-ups. This is our end position. And we're gonna start off with our head between the chairs. As we push up, our feet are just dead weight. They're just added resistance that we slide on the carpet. But you're gonna feel it here, pressing up. Again, keeping that mind-muscle connection. 
working that lower pec, trying to take, trying to take that anterior delta out of it by making sure we're in proper anatomical position. As we come up, I'm not here, keeping that chest nice and tight, scooping, squeezing, back down. Last one. Again, when I say to failure, it's failure with perfect form. Otherwise, we're gonna be using all of those triceps. We're gonna be walking out here, doing this. These types of movements, when we're really looking to target a more specific area, you gotta make sure that you're using the right angles, creating that tension, creating that angle to where we're utilizing our lower pec. This is a great chest workout. I've been in the gym doing traditional bodybuilding exercises and not had this great of a pump. All right guys, those are my four best chest exercises at home that you can do. Now, hopefully you guys have seen how we have put together our at home chest workout. Really, we're not gonna necessarily do all these movements every single time we have a workout at home, depending upon what program you're in, but you can see how we come up with our training routines, really how we structure things. Now, if I'm under a time crunch, if I'm maybe doing a full body workout or in a hotel, if I wanna kinda of get the best of all of these push-ups into one and just do one push-up, the one I'm gonna be doing is a Hindu push-up. Basically, we're gonna be in that pike position, coming down, working that upper pec, and then back into that dip movement and then reversing it. So you can see this push up right here gets both that upper pec in here to our lower pec. It's a good one for full range of motion as well. And it's gonna tire you out. That's extra credit. But what I want you guys to do is after 90 seconds of rest, after you do one of the giant sets, you're then back into it. So basically we have four different chest exercises. We have three rounds, 20 seconds in between each exercise, 90 seconds when you complete a full circuit. So this one, it's gonna get you pumped real quick, but also training to failure, we're gonna be getting more than just a nice pump out of it. We're gonna be breaking down those muscle fibers. So make sure, just like when you know, you're training in the gym, your nutrition, even though you might be at home, training at home, your nutrition has to be on point because if you're not getting adequate nutrition, you're not gonna be able to grow muscle. So anytime that I'm looking to add muscle, I'm gonna be at a slight caloric surplus. Now, it's not to say that you can't add muscle and get leaner at the same time. That's in a whole nother video entirely, but it usually takes a lot more time. It's a slower process and it all depends on someone's age, their experience levels. So we'll come into that in another, another video entirely, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this chest workout. I gotta get back to my next two rounds. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Smash that like button, make sure you subscribe, and let me know what you wanna see us training next time. Thanks guys. Oh,